All right. This is one of the most important foundational concepts of the entire C++ language. So I'm going to take my time and explain it in the best way I possibly can because this is one of the most important videos in the entire series, or at least these series of videos talking about classes are the most important. So let me take a second here to explain the fundamental difference between a class and a struct and basically what a class in C++ is. So if you guys remember from the C video, a struct was basically a way for you to group low-level data types into fields and create your own more complex aggregate data type that would have more of a meaning to it. In other words, instead of just having all your loose floating points and integers and all your other types just floating out there, you can aggregate them into a type and that type could have a concept, um, a conceptual meaning behind it. C programmers have been using structs as objects and kind of been doing their own form of object-oriented programming for quite a while before C++ came out. So when C++ was designed around the concept of object-oriented programming and what that means, the fundamental plan of theirs was to expand what a struct could do and to make it more useful for object-oriented programmers. So first let me explain what C++ added to struct and I'm not even going to talk about class yet until I cover that. Because believe it or not, classes in C++ and structs are very, very familiar already, uh, are very, very similar anyway. So when you declare a vertex struct, and you can basically play with its values, right? Just like you could, could in C. You basically allow yourself an object where you can break right into the members of that object via the dot operator and get at the individual fields. So you can create as many of these objects as you'd like and you can do whatever you want to with the individual ones. And as you guys already know, when I modify x of v, I don't do anything to x of v2 because every object of that struct has its own three copies of the variables inside. So every vertex struct has an x, a y, and a z. And, and those are independent. They're inside the struct. So what did C++ add to struct? Because right now all I've really done is talked about a C struct. Well, what they did was they allowed you to actually put functions inside of the struct that can operate on the data members of the struct without having to pass the structure into the function. So for example, you now can place functions inside here. And by ba being able to put functions inside of there, you can basically make the code inside of there automatically have access to any of the fields of the struct. So for example, if I created a function in vertex struct and I said set to zero, I could put code inside here that accesses x, y, and z. And every time this function is called, it is operating on the x, y, z members of the object that called it. Another way to explain this is, yeah, I have a function called set to zero, right? I can't just call that. It's not a global function. If I call that here, I'll get an error and it'll say it's undeclared. However, if I say v dot set to zero, that function will compile. Now this is what's new. This is the ability, um, it's called a member function or sometimes a method of the object v. And what that allows me to do is if I have any instance v is an instance of the vertex struct. Or if I have any object of that type, I can call methods on that object the same way I can access fields on that object just by pressing or, 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 or typing the dot and then the name of that function. So for example, if I had another one that said set to, I'll just call it set, right? I can do float x, float y, float z. I'm going to go ahead and just for argument's sake give these different names because it'll be confusing if I don't. So I'm going to say um, x equals bx, y equals by, z equals vz. Remember these v ones are the arguments to the function and then x, y, and z belong to the object setting it. So now what I can do instead of having to do this ugly c-ism down here, I basically can just say v dot set one, two, three. As you can see, it works. This is this is like the bare bones basics of what a class is in C++. Despite the fact I know I'm still using struct, um, but this is basically what they added. You can never do this in C. Um, so that's pretty cool. That's not necessarily all there is to it. 
And there's going to be some concepts that I'm going to kind of mention now and then I'm going to get to later because it's the only way I'm going to be able to keep myself organized in this whole video series so I don't go off into an infinite number of tangents and, and collapse. So what's the difference between struct and class? Well, I'm going to explain this concept better when I get to the encapsulation part. But basically what I'm going to say is that all data members of a class are private by default. It's as if this was here. And all data members and data functions of a class, the default scope is public. So basically what that means is, is a struct, I can access the .xyz after the fact or, or whatever I want to, and um, it will compile and won't give me a problem. However, if I change to this, I'm going to put the exact same code that I put in the class, in, or in the struct in the class. So these things are identical with the exception of the fact that one is a, a class and one is a struct. Now what you'll see is when I do this, if I change vertex struct to vertex, I'll get an error here and it basically says everything I'm trying to do on this thing is in a private scope and none of that's allowed. Um, you are not allowed to access from the outside, these are all instances calling from the outside, you are not allowed to access from the outside of a class any of its data that is in the default private scope. That's essentially what encapsulation is. I'm going to cover that more when I get to the encapsulation video. But basically what that means is anything that's private I can't access. Anything that's considered inside the class is basically inside its own member functions. That's considered from the inside. I'm safe. I can access my own data. That's why I'm not getting errors setting these XYZs. But from the outside, I can't. So what a lot of people do when they're defining classes is they will take the data and they'll set it to private the data members or the, or the fields and they'll take the functions and they'll set those to public. So you can call the functions, you can't call or you can't directly access the fields. It's common practice. It doesn't have to be done that way. I could just put public up here and it would act just like the struct. As far as the struct is concerned, most people leave it alone and don't put public or private anywhere inside of there because structs are assumed to be completely publicly accessible. You can add functions to them or methods or member functions to them, and that's commonly done, but it's always assumed that the members of a struct behave very similar to the way they did in C, and that they are completely public. This public and private mechanism is added to C++. It's new to C++, just like the ability to put functions in here. Long story short is, now that I've made the, the members and the methods of Vertex class private, I'm going to delete the struct. We're no longer looking at structs anymore. This video is supposed to be about classes. There's still going to be an error, and that's because I'm directly accessing v.x. It's not allowed. And when I try to print it, that's also not allowed. However, that's fine. If I wanted to add a, this is sometimes called a setter method. If I wanted to add a getter to get y, I could say float get y, and then I could return y safely through a method here. Now I basically say v.get y and the code compiles. This is the most simple way I can introduce classes to you guys um, without going nuts and confusing the crap out of you. Um, so that's basically what a class is at a very um, fundamental level. You can basically put data in here and then you can put methods on here and you can call them whatever you want. You can make them do whatever you want. This is not diving into object-oriented programming just yet. This is just talking about fundamentally what a class can do at the lowest level. I'm going to cover in the next video some of the crazy things you can actually do conceptually with classes and the way to help you organize your code. Really quick before I finish this introduction to classes video, I'm going to explain um, how to properly declare classes in C++. Um, this is considered usually very, very bad practice to declare a class and provide the code to its member functions all in one shot. This is commonly not done, so I'm going to show you guys how to properly do that before we end. So suppose I wanted to take this vertex class as it is and sort of properly modularize it. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the file that we're in, and I'm going to put this into a, um, I'm going to save this, I'm going to call this main.cpp. So now we have main, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a little feature of Espresso C. It's actually already on here called build and combine all files. This is a new feature that I'm adding to Espresso C. And by the time this video hits YouTube, um, this feature will already be properly tested and available um, in the latest version of Espresso C. But basically what this does is it's going to take every single open window in the entire Espresso C program and build them all into one um, 
proper run of the program. So it'll, it'll allow you to have more than one source file, um, which is crucial to do what I'm about to show you in C++. So first thing I need to do is I need to create a header file, and I'm going to call it vertex.h. So what's commonly done in C++ is when you create a class, usually you will have a header file for the name of the class, and you will have a CPP file for the name of the class. So for example, for every class you have, that class will go into one set of files. There'll be a vertex.h and a vertex.cpp, or there will be a .h and a cpp, one pair for each class, so that you can keep things separate. So the way this works is, I have a, I've already just created my header. I'm going to create a um, C++ file here, and I'm going to save that as vertex.cpp. Done. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the class definition nice into the header file and we're going to basically take the methods and we're going to make these just prototypes the same way you would make prototypes in a header file in C basically just putting the member or the method header and then ending it with a semicolon and providing no code this is essentially what's called the class header or the class definition this is all that's needed in the header it basically is a way for if somebody was reading this, they can say, oh cool, there's a class called Vertex, and these are the functions that it exposes. These are the ways that I can use Vertex. That's the header file. Now, when you go into the CPP file, this is the part that's usually considered separate or hidden from people that have access um, to the class that are only want to use it. This basically provides what's called the class implementation. So what I'll do in this case is I'll include Vertex.h, and then I will provide a implementation of its functions so that basically I don't need to provide anything here except what these functions are so that when I include vertex.h and then link vertex.cpp the code will just be provided. Now from a perspective of wanting to use it for main I have to include vertex.h now which basically tells me there is a class called vertex and it tells me what methods I could call on it so we're covered as far as main is concerned. Now that I want to basically, um, we're almost done here, I want to take my vertex header and source file pair and make sure they're working properly. There's one thing I haven't done right yet, and that is basically I need to provide what's called scope resolution to these member functions. Because as you can see right now, if I just put this code right here, it's saying there's a global public, or just basically outside of a class called function. If I go to do this, it won't work. So in order for me to fix this basically, I have to tell it that this function is inside vertex and I do that by using scope resolution by basically giving the name of the function two colons called the scope resolution operator and then the name of the function or the return type two colons and then the name of the function and it basically tells me hey this is the source code function for set to zero of vertex and I basically just put that in front of every single one of these things. So now as you can see, now that I have everything in place, when I hit run, the program will run just as it did before. However, I've managed to clean up my main file to basically saying that I just want to use Vertex by including its header file and then I can just use it. Even though this looks very alien to you right now, this will become very common practice and will, will look very familiar to you as you do C++ for a while because this is the de facto way to create classes and, and implementations for classes in C++. Just as a recap, you create a header file, you put the class definition in the header file, usually you will mark your data members or fields as private, you will provide member functions to access those fields and do other things with the class in general, then inside the corresponding name CPP file you will include your own vertex header or your own header file and you will provide the implementations of the functions that the class supports. So your methods will be defined basically by using the same way you always provided function declarations, but you will put the name of the class and a double colon in front of the function name. That is the intro to classes video. Um, I fully understand if you guys don't get it the first time through, feel free to watch it more than once. Um, in the further videos, I will cover some of the more deeper um, explanations and concepts behind using classes in C++. Thanks for watching, guys. Until the next time.